Let's take a look at the DC motor characteristics and also the interface circuit design for unidirectional control. This is the DC motor that's included in the MyRio starter kit. It's the Hinglung Motor Manufacturing Company, model 201-A. Let's review some of the key characteristics. It's a DC brushed motor. It's intended to operate from 1.5 to 4.5 volts, which means one, two, or three 1.5 volt batteries in series. It has a three volt nominal voltage in node load conditions, 12,800 RPM at 0.32 amps at maximum efficiency, 10,000 RPM at 1.28 amps, and 80 gram centimeters stall torque. Now let's take a look at some of the general behavior of any DC motor. I'm going to be plotting a couple parameters versus torque. Let me begin with speed. We notice that speed or the shaft speed of the motor drops as we demand more and more torque. At the no load condition we have maximum speed. This is when torque is zero. Looks like we have the maximum speed then of 12,800 RPM. At the other extreme we have stall torque. This is where the shaft is completely stopped. That gave us a value of 80 gram centimeters. Between those two points we have essentially linear behavior. Now the second parameter that I wanted to plot as a function of torque is the current demanded by the motor. Here we see at no load it's 0.32 amps and at maximum efficiency it's 1.28 amps. Turns out that the current is also approximately linear. Now as we consider the operating voltage, upper limit is 4.5 volts and that suggests that we cannot use the MyRio 5 volt source but instead we need to use the 3.3 volt supply. Also in terms of the current demanded by the motor even at the low value of 0.32 amps, this is already close to the limit of 300 milliamps for the MyRio. You'll need to use an external power supply if you want to operate the motor at maximum efficiency. I should note that I measured 190 milliamps approximately for no load current with a 3.3 volt supply. All right, let's move on to the design of the interface circuit. At one end, we have the digital output from the MyRio, and this needs to drive the motor. This is unidirectional control, that is the motor is going to be either on or off and it's only turning in one direction. Now the output is limited to around 4 milliamps of drive current and it produces a maximum of 3.3 volts. The motor, again, can draw possibly several amps, therefore we need some kind of an interface between the two. And a power MOSFET works as a solid state switch. We'll be using the IRF510 in the MyRio starter kit. Here's a picture of the device itself. You can see the gate, drain, and source connections. And here's the schematic symbol for this device. This is an N-channel enhancement mode MOSFET, by the way. Now the gate to source voltage, VGS, controls whether or not the channel resistance, RDS, is high or low. The transistor is on when VGS exceeds the threshold voltage, which can range anywhere from 2 to 4 volts. The 4 volt possibility means that we need a level shifter, because the MyRio is only producing a maximum of 3.3 volts. And for some devices, it might not be sufficient to even turn it on. Alright, I'll place the switch in series with the motor and the power supply. We'll use, again, 3.3 volts and here's our connection to ground. In between the two we need the level shifter and we can use a CMOS inverter for the purpose. Now specifically we need to use a 5 volt supply for the CMOS inverter and that takes care of the level shifting. That means the output of the CMOS inverter is either 5 volts or 0 volts and that's sufficient to ensure that the RF510 turns on when needed. Here's another important consideration, dealing with the power on situation or after a MyRio software reset. The DIOs all go to input mode in this case, and the 40K internal pull-up resistors to 3.3 volts become an important consideration for the circuit. 
The CMOS inverter input is high, therefore its output is low, and that ensures that the IRF 510 is off, and the motor then is off and does not spin until ready. However, you have a different situation when you're using the MSP. In this case, we have 40K internal pull-down resistors. In this case, if you're pulling low, then the CMOS output is high, and the motor would turn on as soon as you power up the device. To eliminate that behavior, override the pull-down with a smaller valued pull-up resistor to 5 volts. 4.7K ensures that the line is pulled high. Now let's take a look at the complete interface circuit. And this is specifically for the MXP. Here we have the CMOS inverter constructed from the ZVN2110 and the ZVP2110, both of which are in the MyRio starter kit. Here's the IRF510, and I'm also including a 1N4001 diode in parallel with the motor. Here's why. When the transistor is on, we have a pretty large current flowing through the motor and flowing through the IRF510 on its way to ground. When you abruptly switch it off, that current is associated with stored energy in the motor and it needs to go somewhere. So the diode becomes forward biased at that point and dissipates all of the stored energy inside the motor. And this also avoids developing high voltage spikes across the drain source of the IRF 510.